Take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. And once you're there, direct your attention, if you will, please, to verse 18 and stand to your feet, if you will, in honor of the reading of God's word. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated, and let me have a word of prayer. Father, uh, my heart, our hearts have been moved at what we saw. We have seen, uh, Lord, the New Testament church alive in the ordination of these servants tonight. We have seen this one local church practice a part of the Great Commission, sending servants out. Lord, I thank you for these wonderful people. I thank you, dear God, for what they do. All over the world, some of them have probably never been far from Lancaster, California, but what they do, what they have done, their prayers, their gifts, Lord, have reached around the world. Dear Lord, I'm probably going to preach in shorthand tonight. And would you give our people the ability to hear it in shorthand? I pray for the anointing of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I was saved on May the 15th, 1963, somewhere between 8.30, I mean somewhere between 8.15 and 8.30, at the back gate of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, where I was stationed. Obviously, my life changed. I did not have a Bible. I came home every day from work on the base, and one of the things that I would do shortly after coming home was, Dottie, where's your Bible, honey? And she would loan me her Bible, gladly, of course, and I would begin reading the Word of God. My pastor, who never asked me to do anything, he told me to do it. And my pastor told me where I was to begin reading in the Bible. And I followed his instructions, and the third phase of those instructions, after 1 John five times, and the Gospel of John once, He directed me to the book of Matthew, and he said, I want you to read the whole New Testament through. Let me know when you get through with it, and I got something else for you. And so I began reading uh, the Gospel of Matthew. My wife used to make a lunch for me, and I would uh, take that lunch to work, and if it was good, clear days, I would sit down on the embankment near our headquarters building, and I would eat the lunch that Ms. Lancaster had um, fixed for me. My favorite was always bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwiches. And uh, I had my Bible with me. Uh, We had won an attendance contest, and we won a gift certificate to a Christian bookstore, and I went and got me a Bible. First Bible I'd ever owned, other than the one at Grandma Lancaster, the church that Grandma Lancaster took me to, gave me when I was just a boy. But I began reading. And one day it got me to Matthew 28, 19 and 20. I can see it right now. Bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich, thermos jug. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Hmm. Got to be some kind of hidden meaning there. And after I went back and read it two or three times, I, I said, you know, I don't know whether I'm different or not, but I believe that's talking about me. Go you therefore. 
and teach all nations. And then I began to reason. Now, you know, Marines have been accused of a lot of things, and one is, you know, not being as bright as they should be, and, and uh, that was me at that time. But I said, Lord, they're not going to let me off work. And where do I start? And I don't have enough money for plane tickets. Now, I actually had a discussion with the Lord, something like that. Well, in my reading, it got me over to Mark chapter 16, verse 15, going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And once again, as a PFC in the Marine Corps, I said, I believe, that, I believe that's talking about me. And then I read further over to uh, Luke and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in all the world beginning at Jerusalem. And once again, Lord, are you talking about me? And then finally, it began to clear up a little bit because I really did want to study the Bible and I just feasted on the Word of God and I had a preacher that taught me to the Bible. But I got to John chapter 20 and verse 21 and there the Bible says, as the Father has sent me, Jesus, even so send I you. And this is the conclusion that I came to. When God the Father sent God the Son, He sent God the Son fully equipped to do everything that God the Father wanted Him to do, including dying on the cross and being raised again from the dead. And I said, if God the Father has done that for God the Son, maybe He'll equip me to do what He wants me to do. And then I read over in the book of Acts, and, uh, and there the word of God said, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. And in, then in verse 8, but ye shall receive power. Two different words, by the way. Two different words. I'm not trying to teach you a Greek lesson, but two different words. The first word is word power is the word for authority. It's God almighty who has told every one of us, every one of us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. It's God Almighty that did that for you and for me. But then in the next verse he says, but you shall receive power, dunamis, dynamite, ability, whatever God tells you to do, whatever God tells me to do, God gives us the ability to do it, including this mandate, this wonderful commission of going into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature. Amen. And in Acts chapter one, verse eight, but you shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I have, I have found out that none of what I am to do depends on me, but everything that we, He wants me to do depends on Him, and I am to be dead to self and alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me. I love that word, witness. It's the same word in the original language for martyr. Do you know who God's looking for? God's not looking for people who say, do you know something? I believe that with my training and my background and my charisma and my ability, I can do it. God's not looking for people like that. God's looking for people that realize they can do nothing without the Lord Jesus Christ. But they can do everything through him, but you shall be witnesses unto me. Both, do you know that your Bible says that? Both. Now, class, stick your fingers up. How many does both mean? <laughs> You're wrong. Both Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. 
Do you know what that wonderful word means in its context? It means simultaneously. God wants you and me to be witnesses all over the world simultaneously. Now he wants us to start in Jerusalem. I said, you know, I've never been to Jerusalem, but if that's what's going to take, maybe I can get some time off and go there. <laughs> but quickly I came to the conclusion that my Jerusalem was the second Marine Division of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And God gave Dottie and I a broken heart to reach the men and the women of the Second Marine Division of Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Where's your Jerusalem? Have you started yet? When's the last time you've opened your mouth and told somebody about Jesus in your Jerusalem? Oh, God has ordained that you begin by being a witness in your Jerusalem. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Do you know what missionaries are? Do you know what Christians are? They're basically delivery boys. They've got a treasure and that treasure is to be delivered to somebody else. That treasure is called the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God that on that May 15th, 1963, that man of God did not come to me with some religious philosophy. He came to me with the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And a man that had been in the depths of sin was redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ in hearing the gospel. Just like that witch doctor you heard about a little while ago. Just like people all over the world. Are you witnessing in your Jerusalem? I don't have to tell you, we've seen a little sign tonight. Uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, people around us that live around us, some of them don't look like us, some of them are different skin colors, some of them are for dim, different ethnic backgrounds. They live around us, but God wants us to give them the gospel. And then, into all the world. You say, Brother Lancaster, how can I do it? I, I wish I had time. But Almighty God has ordained in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, turn if you will, like to, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and uh, verse 1. The Apostle Paul says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, now concerning the collection, that's money, money. Now concerning the collection for the saints as I have given order. You know, loud mouth Marines, they love to order people around. But that's not what it's talking about. That word order is a system. Almighty God ordained a system that from the church, missionaries be sent out and our involvement will be put to our account for the souls that have been saved. These missionaries going to many parts of the world as you are involved in that, God says that it will be put to your account. I was preaching in Japan several years ago, and the song leader was a Japanese song leader. And oh, was he exciting. I was told, uh, Brother Lancaster, don't hug the Japanese men. Uh, they, they just don't understand you. And don't use colloquialisms. And I got stopped frequently by my uh, interpreter, translator. 
But after it was over, I mean, that Japanese song later, you know, and I, I thought, oh, he, he's exciting. He just got the joy of the Lord all over him. And when I got through preaching and he got through leading the last song, I went up to him and I said, hey, let me ask you something. You speak English? I reached out and got him and hugged him and shook him a little bit, you know. He was a little short guy. I shook him and somebody said, Brother Lancaster, you picked him up to your shoulders and when he was looking out over you, he had the look of terror on his face. <laughs> and I put him down and I said, come here and translate for me. I said, uh, tell him that I've enjoyed his song leading. Uh, you know. <laughs> Excuse me, Brother Sisk, I'm sorry, my brother. My, my, uh, my Japanese is not too good. <laughs> but um, then I, I said, uh, tell him that I appreciate him. He did. And I said, when did you get saved? I told him. I said, um, ask him who led him to the Lord. And that was his pastor. I said, ask him who led him to the Lord. And the, the pastor said, he wanted me to tell you that I was the one that led him to the Lord. I looked over at the young man and when he said that he had tears coming down his cheeks after he had lovingly looked over at the missionary that had led him to the Lord. It, what is thank you, brother sis? Do mighty got the kazimas? And I think that's what I said to him. Do mighty got the kazimas? I had a southern accent on it. And uh, <laughs> I said, uh, do mighty got the gazimus. And I started to walk away. And he, oh, I went back and he said something else. And, and the missionary said, he wanted me to tell you and Ms. Lancaster, thank you for leading your church to send my missionary here to lead me to the Lord. That's what the church is supposed to do. That's what Christians are supposed to do. Now let me, let me tell you this, it's not a fairy tale when God says, you! Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. My sweet wife is a good girl. Her father was a drunkard. Her mother got her life thoroughly right with God and was one of the godliest women that I've ever known. We had a military ministry in Memphis and all of those GIs from Millington Naval Air Station, they loved Mrs. Nehmer because she babied them, took care of them, fed them. And, uh, but as a teenage girl, one day a man gave my sweet wife the gospel, and she got saved. On May the 15th, 1963, now here, here's the way it was. May the 15th, 1963. No hope, misery, heartache, alcoholic mother, didn't know where my dad was. My mother got involved with a gangster. He beat her up. I almost killed him. 
I was in and out of jail. My mother committed suicide. But one day, somebody gave me the same gospel that she got. And somebody gave me exactly the same gospel that these missionaries are going to take all over the world. And as we send them, we will be having a part in that. And Almighty God says it will be put to our account. I want to say a closing word to the missionary and then I want to give a closing admonition to anybody that may be here tonight and you're not saved. First of all, a closing word to the missionaries. Don't quit. Stay with it. Brother Roloff used to Sing. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room. It's a fight and not a game. Run if you want to. Run if you can. But I've come here to stay. Stay. Don't leave. If God gives you orders to leave, that's, that's okay. But the first time you get a hangnail, don't or the first time you miss mama, or the first time things get tough, don't leave. Stay there. Ms. Lancaster and I, we went to Germany and stayed there for 20 years, and mm, how wonderful, how wonderful. But, but we got paid. You say, how much did we get paid? <laughs> I don't know how much we got paid. But we did get paid, especially through the lips of one girl. She was probably 19 years old, Tiffany Hendrickson. When we met her, she had a baby in her arms and she was dragging another one. Her husband was deployed. She'd never been out of the United States. She was just about as lonely as a human being could be. God had sent us there, and that's the people that God had sent us to. Ms. Lancaster began loving her, caring for her. On a couple of occasions, I would catch her in the middle aisle and I would say, honey, do you have everything that you need? Her husband was just, you know, just about as low rank as you can get, and he was deployed. Honey, is there anything that you need? Well, preacher, I don't want to bother you with it, but we do need some things. Hold on, honey. Hold on. I got a little extra money. Here, you take that. Let me know if we can do anything else. As it got near Christmas, I, and her husband's deployed. He's gone. She hears about the men being killed. And I said, Tiffany, you got your Christmas tree up? She said, Preacher, I don't have enough money for a Christmas tree. I said, Tiffany, Ms. Lancaster and I will be by this week and we'll take care of that. And when we got there, I said, what about the kids? They got any Christmas presents? Don't worry about it. We'll take care of it. We loved her, caught her tears, tried to be like daddy, tried to be like mama. That's where God sent us. God sent us to those people. Rumor got started that Ms. Lancaster and I were leaving. We were actually coming to the States for two weeks preaching mission. 
I mean, every, you know how rumors fly? You, you, you probably have never had anybody spread a rumor about you. Or <laughs> uh, but, but I mean, rumors fly. The Lancasters are leaving, they're leaving. The BSB commander called me and he said, Dr. Lancaster, we're gonna miss you. I hear that you and your wife are leaving. I said, Colonel, we're not gonna leave. We're not leaving, I'm going to states preaching two weeks and coming back. Businessmen called, travel agent called, uh, church members called, oh, Brother Lancaster, we're sorry to hear y'all are leaving. On the Sunday before we were to fly out on Monday morning to come back and preach and be back in two weeks, Tiffany met us at the back door after the service was over and dragging the other one. Preacher, are you and Ms. Lancaster coming back? I said, yes, honey, it's just a rumor. We're coming back. She said, please come back. I said, Tiffany, we're coming back. She stepped outside the door and I greeted the rest of the folks going by. And when she met us as we were going out, she said, Preacher, I can take it if you'll just tell me the truth. Are y'all coming back? I said, Tiffany, we're coming back. <laughs> she paid us right on the spot she paid us. She said, Preacher, you and Miss Frank has to come back. I need you. That was it. That paid for our 20 years of being there. Somebody needed us. Missionaries, there are people that need you. Some of them are waiting for you. They're there and they need you. Recognize, and those of you that are not missionaries, recognize that probably the greatest thing in this world, one of the greatest things in this world is to be needed. And if you and I will be involved in this, one day when we meet in glory, we'll meet thousands, maybe more of others to say, thank you. I needed my missionary. Thank you. Now be saved tonight. You say, what is all this hullabaloo about? What, what is it? Because people need to be saved. Religion won't do anything for you. Religion starts wars and sends people to hell. Religion is not going to do anything for you. What you do, you need Jesus. You need to be born again. And he's here. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I can hear his voice again. Jesus is here. Accept him into your heart. Please.